Okay, I want to go through the steps of how to make a molecule, how to show bonding. We went through it in class, but I know we went kind of fast. So, let's review. If you're given a set of atoms, could you make a molecule? And after this video, the answer is for sure, yes. The first thing I want you to be sure you can recognize is what a molecular formula means. So if I gave you C3H6O, you need to make sure you understand that this means there are three carbon atoms. There are six hydrogen atoms and there is one oxygen atom. Okay. And carbon is carbon is carbon no matter how many they are. So what we're going to look at next is using the periodic table to determine the number of valence electrons. Because it doesn't matter how many hydrogens there are in a molecule, all those hydrogens only have one valence electron. And it doesn't matter how many oxygens there are in the molecule, every oxygen has six valence electrons. Likewise, every carbon has four. So let's look at the periodic table and remember how to figure this out. Okay, so the first thing to know is you will always be given a periodic table. You do not need to memorize any of this. You need to be able to use the periodic table. And the thing that you want to look for is the atomic number. And the atomic number is the smallest of the two numbers. Balls of the two numbers. Right? So if you can look here, nitrogen's atomic number is 7 and silicon's is 14 and bromine's is 35. The big number is the atomic mass. So remember, the atomic number is the number of protons an atom has. The atomic mass is bigger because it's the number of protons plus, oops, plus the number of neutrons. So you're adding two things together, so that gives you a bigger number than when you just have one. Okay. Don't be lazy and just look for the top number because the periodic table can be written in different ways. So here is oxygen. Again, the small is the atomic number, which is here and here. The O is what we call the chemical symbol. So that's how we write a molecular formula. We don't write out the word oxygen, we just use O. Again, the big number is the atomic mass, and the element's name is oxygen. Remember that all atoms on the periodic table are neutral. So that means the charge is zero. That means the number of protons with a positive charge equals the number of 
electrons with a negative charge. Right? So if oxygen's atomic number is 8, that's the number of protons, then the number of electrons is also 8. When you're making a molecular uh, structure, when you're making chemical bonds, what you really care about is the valence electrons. Remember, and that is the electrons in the outermost shell. And how do we find that? We use the 288 rule. This is the rule for placing electrons into their shells or orbitals. And this is the rule for a stable shell. In the first shell, you need two electrons to be stable. In the second, you need eight. And for biology, in the third, you also need eight. And remember I told you that in chemistry, you get more complex. You can actually have up to 16 in the third shell, but that's due to the SMP, I think, orbitals, maybe D. Okay, so biology, we're gonna just use the 288 rule. The molecules we're gonna work with the most, but not exclusively, is Chan. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. So what I want you to do is pause this video and take a minute and on your own figure out the number of valence electrons for carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So what I'm doing now, hopefully you did this on your own, is I'm figuring out how many electrons carbon has, and I look on the periodic table, and the atomic number for carbon is six, so I know it has two electrons, and then I place them into the shells. So two electrons in the first shell, leaves four electrons in the second shell, and so those are the valence electrons. And so when we draw carbon, we draw, whoops, wants to bond already, four dots representing the electrons in the valence shell, in the outermost shell. Now, if I asked you to draw a carbon atom, you would need to say that there were six protons, and for carbon, there's six neutrons, and then you would draw the two shells, with their electrons circling, and that is the carbon atom, okay? But, oh, well that didn't work. <laughs> I was trying to use a different color. If, let's see if I can do this pointer options. Here we go, that's the carbon atom. But if I'm just asking you to draw um, uh, chemical bonds, you only have to worry about valence electrons. Whoops. Okay. So let's do this for hydrogen. Hydrogen has a molecular mass, uh, sorry, an atomic number of one, so hydrogen has only one electron. Oxygen has a atomic number of eight, so oxygen has two electrons in the first shell, six electrons in the second, so oxygen has 
six valence electrons. The other thing I want you to see about this is that we pair up these. So remember I told you when you're making your electrons go one, two, three, four, and then keep going around the, the kind of the four corners or the compass. Okay. When these guys pair up, which is called a lone pair, they're not going to be involved in our covalent bonds. It's only the electrons that are alone that want to bond. Hey, these guys are lone pairs are stable. They're like a nice cute little couple. Right. So what I'm trying to get at is that oxygen is going to want to make one, two covalent bonds. Okay, it has two electrons that are all alone. They want a partner. What about nitrogen? We look and the atomic mass is seven. So nitrogen has two electrons in the first shell, five electrons in the second shell, so therefore five valence electrons and nitrogen looks like this. One, two, three, four, five. So nitrogen's going to want to make three bonds. Okay. If you memorize those, it goes faster when you're doing this on an exam, say, um, but you can always get this information from the periodic table. Now, there's a, a easy way to kind of cheat and get the valence electrons. Okay, So if I give you something that has more than 8 plus 8 plus 2, which is 18 electrons, you're going to freak out, right? So if I was making you bond something with uh, 10, say down here, and you can't see that because it's green, um, you would be like, you didn't tell us how to do this. How are we supposed to know? So let me give you oops, a little cheat. Look at these numbers up here. One, two. Skip everything in the middle. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are your number of valence electrons. Cool, huh? Right? Carbon has four. Silicon has four. In your homework, I asked you why might silicon be a basis for life as we know it. It has four valence electrons, just like carbon, so it can make all those crazy backbones and different structures, just like carbon. Here's oxygen with six valence electrons. Same with sulfur, selenium, tellurium, I don't even know what that is, poionium, okay. Chlorine has seven. Here's sodium over here with one. Magnesium we like to use in um, sodium, magnesium, chlorine in ionic bonds. So you can look, and we never do stuff like that in this class. Okay, we're not going to use the metals, the transition metals. So you can look, and all these columns down the columns that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tells you the number of valence electrons. And you'll notice that these are the noble gases, very stable because they have a full shell. All right. So let's go through the steps of how you would make a molecule. So CH4, we did this in class, but let's go through it slowly so you can make sure you understand how to interpret. When I look at this, it tells me there is one carbon and four hydrogen atoms. So I am going to go over here and write down what I have to use. And this is going to be slow because, oops, because this guy is not as cool as my other thing. Okay, and so I know I have hydrogen, which has one valence, 
which has one valence, and if you don't know how I'm getting these valences, go back to earlier parts in the lecture. So this is what I have to work with. One carbon, four hydrogens. Okay, this one's kind of easy because you can see that carbon needs four bonds, and we've got four hydrogens. So what, well, let's, let's do this the right way. I'm just being lazy because I don't have the pen color. Okay, so always start with carbon. That's the backbone of life. So I got four carbons. So I've used up that guy. Now I'm going to place my hydrogens. So I used one. I've used two. I've used three. I've used four. Okay. To double check that I have made a stable molecule, I want to count the valence electrons. So hydrogen has two, sharing one with carbon. And this hydrogen has two, and if I remember my 288 rule, I know that those are stable shells. So hydrogen stable. Super, what about carbon? So if I look around carbon and I draw, I circle all the electrons it's sharing, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Carbon is stable. So without those little circles, remember this is called the Lewis Lewis dot structure. Okay, and I'll just erase all those circles I made. That's the Lewis dot structure. If I ask you to also draw the structural structure, Lewis dot diagram, maybe that's what I should say, Lewis dot diagram. And if I ask you to draw the structural diagram, I'm asking you to show the bonds as lines. So remember covalent bonds hey, right? Every two electrons shared equals one covalent bond. Okay, so this is the structural diagram. This is the Lewis dot diagram. All right. Let's do one we haven't done before. Look at this baby. CH5NO. All right, so what I want you to do is first draw what you have to work with. You have one carbon. You have four, five hydrogens. You have one nitrogen. And let's see if I can put it on my screen. You have one uh, oxygen. So this is what you have to play with to make a molecule. All right. So like I said, always start with the carbon first. So I'm going to write you a little carbon first, hydrogens, last. They're kind of the fillers. Okay, so I've used my carbon. Let's change colors here so I can make sure you see the mm, pretty blue. Okay, let's, let's throw an oxygen on there. So let's take my oxygen and he has one, two, three, four, five, six. Alright, 
and let's take a nitrogen. Let's put this in a different color. Kind of like this orange. All right, nitrogen. I'm going to put nitrogen over here. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So I look at this and I say, okay, what do I have left to make bonds? So I need one, I need two, I need three, I need four, I need five bonds. And guess what? I have one, two, three, four, five hydrogens. So that's why I'm saying put your hydrogens last as little fillers. And so I say I got one, I got two, I got three, I got four, I got five hydrogens. And if I count my electrons, all the hydrogens have two, and the oxygen and the carbon and the nitrogen each have eight. My molecule is stable. So the rule is you always have to make a stable molecule. And to draw the structural, I just interpret and I go, okay, nitrogen has one bond and one bond and a bond with carbon and carbon's got a bond with hydrogen and hydrogen and oxygen is bonding with hydrogen. And when you keep your lone pairs there, it's easy for you to count to make sure everything's stable and you copy to write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And you can go around and see that all your molecules either have the two for hydrogen or the eight. Now, you might have done this and drawn it a different way. Okay. So you might be a, well, let's just do this chemistry person and go, um, that is not right. And I'm going to draw it like this. Carbon. Nitrogen. Oxygen. And then I'm going to fill in one, two, three, four, five hydrogens. And that is correct as well. This is actually a compound called methyl hydroxyl amine. Okay, so hopefully you're starting to notice, ah, this word amine, like an amino acid means nitrogen. Okay. Hydroxyl, you know, is this OH group, and methyl is a CH3. But for this class, I am not going to say draw methyl hydroxyl amine. You can do that in chemistry class. I will take either of those structures correctly drawn. Okay? All right. How do you make C3H6O. I'm hoping, and I should have said this last slide, that you take a minute, pause the, um, sorry, I can't talk and, and click, um, pause this lecture, draw the molecule, come back and see what you got. Okay. How I always suggest you start is, whoa, Whoa, I don't know what I did. Okay. Is the carbon backbone. So you've got one, two, three carbons. Okay. Now I'm going to add my oxygen. And I'm just going to stick an oxygen over here. Mm -hmm. All right. And so now I'm going to look for my hydrogens. And I can see I need one, I need two, I need three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. Uh, I only can get six. All right. So I'm going to place them over here. I'm going to go, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Oops, trying to get rid of that dot. Six. Now what you notice is I have a two leftover electrons. So I'm going to move them here, okay? And I'm going to make this have a double bond. So I'm just transferring my diagram over here. I'm not using all the pretty colors because it's taking me forever. So first let's count the molecules. I have one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. Cool. One, two, three carbons, one oxygen. Is everything stable? Okay, I have eight around oxygen. I have eight around this carbon. I have eight around this carbon. I have eight around this carbon, and each hydrogen has two. This is stable. Oh, and which you cannot read in yellow. Okay. So. Stable. This could be an answer. All right, you've made it stable. If I asked you to draw the structural, you'll do this. And you'll go, oops, double bond with O, right? Cool. Did you come up with something else? You might have come up with this. Okay, three carbons, six hydrogens, and an oxygen. That works too. You might come up with this. Two, three, four, five, six. This carbon, oops, sorry, in the middle has four oxygen. This is actually acetone. Okay, that's actually the correct structure, but for this class it doesn't matter. Okay, as long as you make a stable molecule and you only use what's given and use everything that's given, you'll have a correct um, molecule. Remember, 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 ionic compounds have charged atoms because the atoms gain or lose electrons. So our classic one is sodium, sodium chloride. And if you do your cheat sheet on the periodic table, oh, this is ugly. We look at sodium over here, and we cheat and we say, okay, it has one valence electron, and we look at chlorine, we go back here, and chlorine's over here in the purple, and it is in the seven column, so it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and since I told you this is ionic, you need to show me how the electrons 
are moving. So you can go, okay, is chlorine going to give up 7 or is sodium going to give up 7? Well, it's 7, 1. It's much easier to give up 1, so sodium is going to give up 1 electron, which since it's lost an electron, it is now positive. Since chlorine has gained an electron, it's now negative. And then I just ask you to put them in brackets. And that is your ionic compound. Okay, so I will ask you to show me the movement of electrons. And then this is how you write it. You always write the cation, the positive one first, and the anion, and I, bleh, and, oops, sorry, anion, the negative one, second. Also make sure that this is electrically neutral. Okay, that's your, that's your double check. So you have one minus one plus, that equals a charge of zero. So you're good. All right, so let's try this one. So go ahead, pause the video. You figure out how to make a um, ionic compound with lead and oxygen, and then I'll show you my answer. So if you look on the periodic table, lead, this is where it's helpful, is down here, where did I see it? Lead, whoa, um, 82 electrons. We're not gonna place those, but we know it's in the four column. So we know that lead has four valence electrons. And you already know that oxygen has six. And we know that we have two oxygens. And so we go, okay, well, interesting. We're not making a covalent bond because she has told us that this is ionic. So someone's going to have to lose electrons. Someone's going to have to gain electrons. In order to have a stable valence shell, Lead is going to give up two electrons to that oxygen, and lead is going to give up two electrons to that oxygen, which is going to make the oxygen two minus, right? It gained two electrons. Same with this oxygen. And what's our lead going to be? It's going to be 4 plus, because it lost a total of 4 electrons. So when we combine this to show our ionic molecule, we have lead, we always write the cation first, and then we have oxygen, but we have two of them. So make sure when you are writing this, those subscripts represent the number of atoms. Oh, I don't know why I just said. Just like here. Okay, so put the subscript on the outside. So this bracket is showing me who's got the charge. And then you're telling me there's two of them. And lead has got a plus four charge. And when there's nothing there, it's implied Oops, oops. It's implied, hey. It's implied that it's the number one. Okay? Finally, 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 hydrogen bonds are the other types of bonds that you will be drawing in this class. Hydrogen bonds are made between a hydrogen with a partial positive charge and either oxygen with a partial negative charge or nitrogen with a partial 
negative charge for this class. Okay, that's all we're focusing on. And remember, when you make a hydrogen bond, it's dot, 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 because it's a weak bond. It has to be between two things with partial charges opposite. And remember that this hydrogen is attached to some other part of a molecule. Okay, So they're not free floating. And these oxygens, because how do you get a partial charge? You get a partial charge from polar covalent bonds make partial charges. Right? So all of these right here are polar covalent bonds. So whatever that hydrogen, nitrogen, or oxygen is bound to, the oxygen and nitrogen are pulling a little bit more, so they have a slight negative charge, and the hydrogens are having the electrons around them a little bit less, so they have a slight positive charge. Hydrogen bonds are always between molecules as opposed to within a molecule. So polar covalent bonds are found within a molecule. Hydrogen bonds are between two molecules. So within a, a one, a single molecule between two, the beautiful number two, molecules. Okay? Hydrogen bonds are shown, showed by dot, dot, dot because they are weaker bonds. So if I said, draw the hydrogen bonds for ammonium and water, you should recognize that ammonium, ammonium, ammonia, 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 I think, sorry, okay, is NH3. And you could figure this out because nitrogen has five valence electrons, hydrogens each have one. Because it's nitrogen and hydrogen bonding, we know that the nitrogen will have the slight negative charge and the hydrogen will have the slight positive. So remember in this class we're interested in those polar covalent bonds, which are here, I'm making them thick, here, 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 and we're most concerned between nitrogen and hydrogen or oxygen and hydrogen. So if you're going to draw water, you know that oxygen has a slight negative and hydrogen has a slight oops, positive. And between this oxygen and hydrogen, and let me just use a totally different color, Here is your hydrogen bonds, right? So I could also draw an oxygen, um, sorry, yeah, a water molecule over here. And I could show the hydrogen bonds between the nitrogen and the hydrogen. Okay, so these are the H bonds between 
two molecules Water is one molecule held together by polar covalent bonds. And ammonia is a separate molecule. All right. I hope that helps you be able to draw molecules and bonds. Thanks. Ooh.